Hi, welcome back. It's Jeff Frick from Silicon Angles the Cube. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we get to the smartest people we can find, we ask them the questions that you would like to ask them, and we get the information back to you. So today, we're at Accelerator in uh, Mountain View, California. We're here for the Accelerator Enterprise Platform Launch. Um, and as it says here, uh, I'm here with Jeff Haney, the CEO and co-founder. As it says, Jeff, here, the inter first enterprise SaaS platform built from the ground up for mobile. So can you tell us a little bit about, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, um, what, what does that really mean and why is it important? Yeah, well, what's happening in the world is that you know, mobility and cloud and big data, especially with the consumerization of the, of the enterprise, is really changing the way um, companies need to be able to build their stacks and actually um, deploy new software applications, basically. And if you look at kind of the world we've been in the last 15 years with the web platform, um, the software is really built for a package software deployed inside of a middleware or enterprise app server uh, and managed that way, right? And so with cloud computing and mobility, as that, as that changes, um, really it's fundamentally a technology change, but it's also a business change, right? A business model change where we're moving from perpetually sold package software really to on-demand subscription-oriented software. Um, and, and we think that the world needs um, and demands really software and business model to really adapt to that. Okay. So um, why don't we just background for the folks that are new to Accelerator, give us a little bit of the history of the company, kind of where you are, um, size, age, et cetera. Yeah, we're, we're a little over six years old. We, um, you know, overnight success, six years later, I guess, is what they say. Most um, of them are, right? as, and Most <laughs> of them are. Um, so we're, we're, um, uh, we're a venture-funded startup here in Mountain View, California. It's where we're headquarters. Uh, we've raised a little over $50 million in venture capital. Um, we have about 145 employees uh, around the world. Um, and we've We've really been focused on building this uh, this platform for a long time. We started off with a, a really popular open source product called Titanium that um, has been a, just an amazing um, opportunity to really address the needs of the mobile market, the changing needs. Um, we've got probably one of the most worldly, uh, most uh, deployed platforms in the world. Um, about 10% of the smartphones in the world run at least one Titanium or Absolutator built app. Um, hundreds of thousands of developers in our community and few thousand customers. So um, we're really super excited today about the platform because really this connects um, what Titanium does for build, um, the Absolute platform does for the rest of the life cycle. You know, how do we think about testing? How do we think about performance and analytics once the applications go live? Um, and how do we really ultimately bring ROI back to the business? Okay. So uh, to follow up on the titanium thing, uh, like we were just talking to Nolan, we were up at OpenStack Summit and and really saw how open source as a you know kind of an embracing a way to develop technology is changing things. Even with a company like Rackspace, who you think of as kind of a classic colo play, you know what are they doing in open in open source? And even HP, uh, who we talked to, has got a giant portfolio of technology to choose from. Decided to go with the OpenStack. Um, because it is, it leverages the power of, of open source. So talk a little bit about your kind of open source journey and how you're packaging that and still running a commercial enterprise. You've got to pay those investors back uh, at some point. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, people sometimes confuse open source to mean free. Um, I think what open source does certainly has those properties to it, but I think having been in open source for a long, long time and worked on some of the larger open source projects in the world, um, like JBoss, I mean, I think that open source is really more about a mindset. It's really more about enabling a company to really build technology in a way that they can't do themselves, right? You have to have a community of people that are really expanding the innovation curve um, and really helping you um, innovate. Um, it's about control, right? It's about how do you really enable a company to not get locked in necessarily and in, 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 into one proprietary system. Um, and it's really about building a great community. It's about people that really ultimately will drive um, a lot of value around what you're ultimately trying to do um, that happen way beyond our four walls. Uh, we think we're really smart people and we think we're really innovative, um, but every day we're always surprised by all the good innovative things that people have done. And if you're a platform company, I think you have to be open source to some degree. Um, so what we've tried to do is we've tried to pick um, the most, some of the most important components of our platform, um, like Titanium, like Alloy, like Studio, um, and, and a number of other technologies, core technologies that are part of our platform. Um, now we've packaged them in a way um, that enterprises want to buy. Right, enterprises ultimately don't want to assemble a whole bunch of technology together. They want a solution. They want something that really ultimately they can put inside, they can get an SLA around it, they know it works, it's all integrated, um, and it really helps them solve their real business problem of technology. Um, and so that's really the how we actually have a rational business model. We think the, the technology and the community around and the ecosystem around Titanium and Accelerator platform is vitally important, uh, and it's the core DNA of really the platform and the business model. 
Awesome. So the last question before I let you go, because it's a busy day here at Accelerators, is, you know, we talked a little bit about mobile first, and clearly the mobile and social and cloud are huge trends, and, and the kind of con the consumerization of, of enterprise applications, as we've seen over and over and over again, as we've been on our road show the last few weeks. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about a, an example of a customer, I'm sure you spend a lot of time with customers, where they developed a mo you know, they, they grasp the concept of what a mobile app could be different and how they created you know maybe an example of a mobile app that was a different way for them to solve a business problem that they never thought of or couldn't do on a laptop or excuse me a desktop yeah, no, that's a great question. We have the privilege of working with lots of uh, companies and lots of developers all over the world. Uh, you know, probably the one of the more exciting things that we're seeing a lot right now is is um, is is what's happening with the mobile application for field and remote workers. Right? Um, it's not the only use case. Of course, we've got you know exciting consumer applications that have launched and and lots of exciting things like games. But uh, for me, one of the more exciting things is is like you said, what happens with mobile first when you have a literally a supercomputer connected to the web or connected to the internet, um, pretty much an always-on type device. Um, and you have that in the hands of thousands of remote workers, people that go into the homes every day and service them, for example. So um, we've been working with George Mihawk, the CIO, CIO of uh, a company called Safeguard Properties, one of the largest mortgage servicing companies in the world. Um, and what George has done as an innovator, um, he's actually lo looked at his labor force, 5,000 plus people that go into homes to service these homes. Um, and, and what do you do with them if you have this sort of mobile phone? You can take pictures, you can get geolocation, you can do routing, you can actually perform better customer service, things that you really couldn't do if you had a remote labor workforce, especially a contract labor workforce um, with laptops and things like that. So when you have this powerful device in your hand, it really allows you to think differently about the business uh, and really a mobile first way. And that's what I think is really exciting is the transformative experiences that business have with mobile. So I, I guess I lied. This will be the last question. But, I, you know, one of the things about SiliconANGLE is we're, we're interested in the tech, but we're also interested in what we call the tech athletes. Uh, and you're obviously a tech athlete. I wonder if you could just speak a little bit about your journey with this company uh, from being a founder with Nolan six years ago, as you said, or seven years ago, uh, to where you've come now and, and kind of what are your thoughts on that and potentially advice to other folks out there who want to do their own thing. Yeah, I have the. I guess I have the um, the um, the privilege, or maybe I'm insane. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so this is my third venture back startup, and I, and I guess the journey is always different. Um, and it, but it's always super exciting. I, I do think you learn a little bit more each time you do it. Um, it's been a really super exciting uh, adventure because um, we've been able to um, put our hearts and soul into something, um, something that's gotten relative scale now, something that most companies don't ever achieve and most startups never achieve. Uh, but you know, we're we're in a very long journey. We we have a very big and ambitious vision, um, and that journey has been great. So what I'd say is um, for entrepreneurs, it's you you kind of have to have um, do two things really well, and it's hard as founders, especially as the founder CEO. You have to have a long term vision. You have to be thinking constantly about what's the ultimate opportunity that we're going after. Um, and then you have to then balance that with very short term tactical. What are we going to do today? What are we going to do tomorrow? Um, and you have to be able to calibrate. Now, we call that pivots uh, here in Silicon Valley, um, but I do think it's really much more about an, uh, you know, a continuous uh, iteration of your business, of your model, of your software, um, and really working with customers, working with your uh, partners, whoever, whoever ultimately you work with, um, and really constantly refining it and constantly trying to iterate your business and your, and your technology. Um, and I think that's really what stands out. Great founders, great teams uh, from ones that maybe have an idea and don't execute. Awesome. That's great insight. Well, thanks a lot. Again, we're here with Jeff Haney at Accelerator in Mountain View, California for the Enterprise Platform launch. We've got a few more guests lined up, so we'll be right back on SiliconANGLE's The Cube.